and you have to make your own decisions and you have to go with it. Well, what if we're wrong and break a rule? I said, then you'll do it again. And you'll learn not to break rules. And if you, and if you can nail me because I didn't, I wasn't precise in my language, I'm not going to say that's not what I meant. I'm going to say, hey, that's pretty neat. I'll learn from that. And it happened. And so I had to tighten up some of my language as it, as it came along. So I, w I want them to have um, autonomy and ownership uh, of, of what they do and, s and purpose. And so it's all tied together. And, and the, the crown is the chair. And it becomes so powerful that it comes up virtually every day in everything they do. So when I say to them, you have to journal every day, uh, one will say, well, how long? And I have a voice, not mine, someone else, another student says, remember the chair. Mm -hmm. and, and so they'll, they'll see, all I s the rule was you have to journal every day. And, that, uh, and that's it. Now you decide. So I had one student this semester, all he did was say hi. And that was fine. But I could read between the lines of that hi um, and read behind it. And it, so it spoke volumes, more than one word to me, combined with everything else. So, yeah. Did he continue saying hi right until the end of class? Right to the end of class. And that was fine. It, it was a test. Mm -hmm. It was a test. He was testing you? Yeah, he was testing me to see how honest I was in, in, um, in the rules I laid down. If I said, all you have to do is make a, an entry each day, that's it. I didn't say what. I didn't say length. Uh, and I make sure in a little way that they know I read every word, which mm -hmm. I do, because that's how I get to know them. And then they start. And then you, they're fascinating to read, sometimes TMI. But, but if it, even if it's TMI, they're looking for someone with whom to, to connect, mm -hmm. someone who can trust, an authority figure who really cares about them. Now, are they supposed to be reflecting on their own learning as part of this, or they can just talk about anything? About anything, about absolutely any. Whatever is on their heart, minds, uh, they talk about. And some of it is soul-searching. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it is heart-rendering. But you see, it gives me, the, in the journals in particular, it gives me a chance to see what's going outside the classroom that's affecting inside the classroom, what's going on inside them that aff that's affecting what they're doing on, on the outside. Part of your teaching to the whole person. Class. Yeah, I mean, right now, the last week of class, there's been uh, rampant manic depression because they're so harried. So they're mm -hmm. sleepless, they're tired, they're anxious, they're, uh, they're angry. Uh, and, and it all comes out in the, uh, in the journals. And, in, and then, of course, we have small talk and conversations. Um, I'll, I'll come in and someone who has contacts will have glasses on. And I'll say, Otisha? Is that you, Otisha? What's, what's different? Oh, I got my glasses on, Dr. Shamir. You wear contacts? Yeah. Oh, interesting. She knows I've seen her, mm -hmm. and I notice her. The rest of the class knows that. And I did. It's not a gimmick. Obviously, I had to be aware and notice. And, and, and so they get this sense of value and worth. Um, that someone really cares, that someone notices them, that someone values them, and it affects their self-confidence and self-esteem. Uh, I never use a negative. Any criticism I have is con positive, constructive criticism. So if they mess up a project, I find the positive thing for them to build on. Hey, this, is, this was good. Now get rid of this stuff and build on it. And build it. You know, a good editor does that. Mm -hmm. So. You've given up two weeks at the beginning of your class mm -hmm. dedicated to generating these communities and mm -hmm. communication skills and so mm -hmm. on. And you're spending a lot of other time doing non-history things. Do you think ultimately the students have learned more history from you this approach than your previous approach before yeah. you were not doing Oh, this? sure. Because it's all hands-on. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've got to use it. First of all, they have uh, one of the exercises, which we call the story, um, has a sense of purpose. So I'll take this exercise, tie it to the purpose and meaning in the class, and wrap everything we do around that sense of purpose. And uh, one of the evaluations this past semester was just beautiful. He says, damn you, Dr. Schmier, you tricked me into learning. Mm -hmm. You know, so 
they, some of them realize it. Now, some of them will say, well, gee whiz, I didn't learn that much history, but I learned a heck of a lot of life lessons because their idea of learning history is to take a test and pass it. That's the way they've been trained. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they'll say, oh, these projects are so, so um, easy and so much fun as if learning is so, should be so painful and laborious. They're not used to having fun and learning at the same time. They don't know how to interpret that and how to define it. So they, they make it into some, almost a sense of nothingness, when in fact, down the road, they'll see that they learned a heck of a lot more than they think they learned. Does it work with everybody? Heck no. Well, Louis, I wish we had more time, yeah. but unfortunately, I know you have another presentation yep. coming up. Thank you for being on the show today. Hey, my pleasure. I'm Graham Glenn, and this is Innovations in Education. Uh, normally, I would suggest you go to our website for comments and questions for our guests. But Louis has his own. He has the Random Thoughts website, and I would encourage you to go to that for lots of pearls of wisdom that he constantly posts there, and I know he responds to people who put questions on the site.